Let's start with 13. I'm needing to break down 18. I need a perfect square times some number. What number should I pick? Say what now? Nine and. Okay, so nine and two give you 18. So what comes out? W to the what? Okay, that's great. What else gets to come out? X to the fourth. Okay, and then what else should be outside? Okay, and then shouldn't anybody be left at home? Should anybody be left at home? I get six divided by two is three, and eight divided by four. Can yeah. I please have William Woodall to lay office to drive? Yes, ma'am. Bless you. Who said that? Thank you, Kelsey. You can have a point. Two's not a perfect square. Why was he getting the same? Why, why, why were we ignoring him? I mean, I, I know nine squared to nine is three. That's why the three had to come out. I get that W to the six. Six divided by two is three. X to the 8, 8 divided by 2 is 4. Like, I'll give you the 3, the W, and the X to the 4, but why did no one other than Kelsey think of the square root of 2? Kelsey, you can have two points. Thank you, baby. Okay, let's do number 14. Please don't break my heart on this one. What number gets to come out of the house? Okay, 6 because the square root of 36 is 6. Okay, okay. Okay. And then what else gets to come out? B to the what? B to the third and... Okay, and then if you'll tell me what's left at home, I'll give every group a point. Okay, every group can have a point. Now, why did this one have an at leftover A and B and under the radical where this one didn't? Why is there an A and B left at home this time? That and and um, Hunter said, worded it well, it's got to deal with that even exponent. We had odd exponents. Seven is an odd number, so we had to leave one of them at home. He didn't have a pair. A is an odd, no, A to the one is an odd number because there's an understood one there, so he didn't have a match, so he had to stay at home. C to the 10, though, that's an even thing. 10 divided by 2 is 5, so that one was nice. Sadly, I'm not done, am I? What should my last line read? Okay, three and six get a point. We still know, and we can still multiply today. Four times six is 24, so there was one last step to go. That is terrific. Okay, let's move on from this and move on to our next thing. Okay, so our notes. This week, we rocked it. On adding, well, there is exceptions to that, but like 95% of us rocked it on adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing. And we rocked it on composition when we did notes together. Like we did fog and golf together and everything was great. And then I gave you that checkpoint and you looked at me like I was crazy. There were about five people who had fog and golf down really well and didn't have to ask somebody. The other five had to ask somebody. So if I were you, because I'm thinking it ahead, because I realize eventually there's a test on all of this, and Ms. Compton doesn't do the fog or golf problem for me. I do them for myself. I would probably find the corresponding study guide questions and practice those at some point soon to make sure I can fog and golf it. Because sadly, fog and golf, while they're not going to come up today, they're going to come up again on Monday. So if you did not understand function composition and you had to BS it through that checkpoint, then, I mean, Tuesday, bless you, Natalie, get a point. Thank you, Natalie. Thank you, Natalie. Okay, but anyway, yes, Natalie is correct. It's not till Tuesday. But on Tuesday, Fog and Golf are coming back. Now, I think some people were mad at the checkpoint because I didn't use Fog and Golf. I used different letters. But if you want to change any problem you're given that has the circle, if they use different letters besides F and G, if you want to change them to F and G, no one can be mad at you. So your checkpoint used to have H's. Heck, I just changed all the H's to S. Why not just do that in the future? Okay. So you kind of broke my heart yesterday with the checkpoint. If you didn't finish the checkpoint yesterday, that would be your first goal today. You're not going to break my heart today. Today is an easy day. 
You're going to pay attention. You're not going to overthink it, and life's going to be good. It's going to be great. <sighs> Let's look at... Mine are all kinds of out of order. What's next in your paint packet? After that, okay, so we were on. Okay, the first page of my packet has the learning targets. Second page has some notes we already covered. Third page has some notes we already covered. Then there's that worksheet we already should have done. Is, it, is this your next one? It says 6-2 at the top. Okay, perfect. That's what we needed. If yours is not, I'm so sorry. Yours somehow got out of order. This is where we want to be today. Okay, so today we're going to talk about a new word. And that new word is inverse. Bless you. That new word is inverse. And that word is going to be important to us. Okay, so an inverse. What is it? inverse? What does that sound like? Opposites, and, or like invertible sounds like. What's invertible mean? I know what convertible is. Invertible. Yeah. So inverse. You know, your teacher would say. Uh, opposite sign or inverse. Well, in our case, inverse is going to mean we're going to swap X's and Y's. So what that means for us, if we're given a list of ordered pairs, which is called a relation, we're literally going to swap the X's and Y's around. So X used to be in the 1, and Y was in the 5, and now we're literally going to swap them. So instead of 1, 5, it's 5, 1. So if you see the word inverse, we need to swap. So on number 1, my ordered pairs are all just going to change orders. It used to be negative 9, 10. Now it's 10, negative 9. It used to be 1, negative 3. Now it's negative 3, 1. It used to be 8, negative 5. Now it's negative 5, 8. She did. She did. I have hers. Oh, she needs it. That's why. That would make sense. Sorry, Abby. No, I didn't even think that through. I knew I had hers. Sorry, Abby. That was fun. Well, I know. Well, my notes are out of order in a different packet, so I'm confused anyway. Okay, can someone help me with number two and do all the order pairs so I can give their group a point? Um, Seth gets a point. Okay, so an inverse. It's really easy when we're given a list of relations or a list of ordered pairs because we literally just swap everybody. Swap, 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 swap. And there actually are questions on the ACT that ask about inverses. So maybe there will be one like this that's nice and easy. Of course, we're going to step it up a tiny bit of a notch. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to figure out whether or not these things we're going to find their inverses. Okay, so let's go down to the bottom. And now we actually got X's and Y's, so oh no. Except I don't see any Y's. Who can I replace with a Y, number one? Uh, Miss Brister would get a point. And I can go ahead and do it in number two as well. I'm going to change the function notation into Y's and X's. And now the directions say that we're supposed to find the inverse. Well, now we don't have a lovely list of ones here, so we are going to have to do a little bit of math, but not that much. All we're going to do is swap X and Y. So let's swap X and Y. So it used to be Y equals, now it's X equals 2Y minus 5. So if I'm wanting to find the inverse of this second function, and I swap my x's and y's, what would it read? Thank you, Mia. You can have your point. 
Okay, so that's great, but you and I both know we don't know how to graph that. We only know how to graph y equals whatever. So yes, we've swapped x and y, and that's great. Now, sadly, we have to solve this equation, rearrange it, and put y equals whatever. That way we can graph it. And check to see whether or not they really are inverses. So let's see. I need to get y by itself. So what do I need to do first? Say it again. How do I get y by itself in this equation? We need to add 5 to both sides. So I'm going to have x plus 5 equals 2y. I almost... I do, and now finally y is alone. So I have x plus 5 over 2 equals y. Or if you'd rather write it as y equals x plus 5 over 2, they mean the same thing. So inverse is today actually pretty easy. If it's an ordered pair or a relation, we're just going to swap them. If it's a function and function notation, you swap x and y and then solve for y. So theoretically, and we'll get into the graphs and what this looks like more on Tuesday, because Natalie reminded me we're out of school on Monday. We'll get more into what the graphs of these two things look like on Tuesday as to why this and this are inverses. But if we're just looking at the algebra, isn't it interesting that in the original guy we multiplied by 2, but in the inverse we divide by 2? And isn't it interesting that in the original guy we subtracted 5, and in the new guy we added 5? So they really do look like opposites because we're doing the opposite operations. Yes. So if you had to guess on the next one, you would assume something about multiplying by 3 and something about adding 4. Yes. And so if we solve this next equation, we're going to multiply by 3 on both sides. So 3x equals y minus 4. And then y still not by itself. What do I need to do? Add 4, so 3x plus 4 equals y. And then exactly what Hunter and I were just discussing. Notice how we had subtracted 4, now we've added 4. Notice how we had divided by 3, now we multiply by 3. And again, we'll get more, while the algebra is interesting to look at, the graphs are even more interesting. So we'll get more into why this graph and that graph are considered inverses on Tuesday. Okay, let's flip and see if we want to do one more. Yeah, we'll do we'll do the last two. Now, why on earth are three and four harder? Why is three harder? Let's start there. Right. You all know he had that word out first. We're gonna give it to him. Seth, you can have your point. Why is four even harder? Yeah, it, two and three. I know for sure said it. If you said exponent as well, you can have your point. I know I heard Natalie and me. Okay, <clears throat> so number five, three. It is y equals negative 5 thirds x minus 8. I need to swap them. So now it's x equals negative 5 thirds y minus 8. And now I've got to solve for y. So what do I need to do? Okay, let's add 8. That's good. 2, I heard you, so you can have your point. And I, I bet you did too, baby. I can't hear you from that far away. You can have your point too. And now, oh no, how are we going to kill off that negative 5 thirds? If you tell me divide by negative 5 thirds, I might cry today. I might. <laughs> what can I multiply by instead? Instead of dividing by negative 5 thirds, what can I multiply both sides by instead? Uh, say it again. Uh, almost. And what's that called? If you come up with that word, I'll give you two points. Y'all heard, like, I'm not crazy. He did say that first. He said reciprocal. You can have your two points. He's on fire today. Okay, so yes, those go away. And sadly, I need to distribute that negative 3 fifths needs to go to the x and that negative 3 fifths needs to go to the 8. So it's going to be negative 3 fifths x and then it's negative 24 over 5. But you and I have talked about this before because I understand that, you know, fractions are not your thing. Where did you get the negative 3 fifths? I knew that's what you were going to ask me, ma'am. 
Now, I just know in my head, 24 over, I just knew negative 3 times 8 is 24. 5 times 1 is 5. I just knew that in my head. If fractions are not your thing and you can't do that in your head, we've discussed before that you can do fractions in your calculator. Alpha y equals, you can type in a fraction like negative 3 fifths. And then you can do times 8. And look, my calculator gave me the negative 24 over 5. Cancel out. It's 8 over 1 right now. So it's literally negative 3 times 8 is negative 24. 5 times 1 is 5. Oh, over here, remember cross canceling? 3 and 3 would cross cancel. 5 and 5 would cross cancel. Okay, so again, we found the inverse. But now Hunter's a little mad because it's not as easy as what we were guessing. Yeah, we had negative 5 thirds and that did flip. But it's not just a plus 8 in this time, sadly enough. It did get a little more complicated. So Hunter was thinking he had this and could just guess the inverse most times. And sadly, it does get a little, a little harder. Okay, so this last one was y equals x squared plus 4. I need to swap my x's and y's. Yes, and you can have your point. And now I've got to solve. You can have your point. Yeah, let's take that square root. So I've got the square root of x minus 4 equal to y. <laughs> and you're like, oh, that's ugly. Well, it is. We're going to leave it like that. That's it. We're done. No, I'm, not, I'm, a, I'm just going to leave it there. We got y by himself. I'm going to call it a day. That, that was our goal. Our goal was to swap x and y and get y by itself. But, again, Hunter's logic is still working. It originally was a plus 4. It's a minus 4. We'd originally squared it, and the opposite of squaring something is to take the square root. So it literally inverses are for real opposites. So if you have a squared, your inverse ought to have a square root. If you had a cubed, your inverse would have a cube root. Just kind of, they're always opposites. Okay, so you should be pretty good on this, I hope. And that's why there is a corresponding worksheet that I'm going to hand you. That we will make do Tuesday. But Seth doesn't like homework over a weekend, especially a long three day weekend. So if he's going to try to get it done a day and go ahead and turn it in, he doesn't like it when he forgets things and gets zeros. I don't like it either. Mm. So six year old fire, we pass these out. Seth's bringing your worksheet. If you didn't pass your checkpoint yesterday, you need to make that your prerogative first today. I don't care if you listen to your headphones, I don't care. <laughs>